Hello, I'm Brian Stuckey, retired teacher and president of Friends of the Cherokee Trail of Kansas. We're here at the Little House in the Prairie near Independence, Kansas. Have you ever wondered about the story of how people traveled from one place to another in the days before there were any roads? Have you wondered about history that's right below your feet? I have. I've always had a curiosity of local history. In the year 2000, when I was discussing the Mennonite settlers around my home in Gossel, Kansas, we began searching for trails in the area, and we discovered one that has a story that was so compelling, we're still researching it today. That is the Cherokee Trail, also known as the Fayetteville, Oregon, California Trail. This is an 1849 gold rush trail that stretched 1,300 miles from Oklahoma and Arkansas out to California. And I found that it passed less than a mile away from my house. On April 24, 1849, a group of white settlers from Arkansas and Cherokees from the nation met near Salina, Oklahoma for the sole purpose of going to the California gold fields. There they elected Lewis Evans as captain. The 40 wagon train of 130 people, including 15 Cherokees, pioneered the first wagon road northwest through northeastern Oklahoma, entering south central Kansas near Tyro. The trail continued in a northwesterly direction until the trail joined the Santa Fe Trail southeast of Galva on May 12, 1849. It went out to Colorado and Wyoming. It joined the Oregon-California Trail at Fort Bridger. From the Cherokee Trail diaries, there is one very great advantage in going with the Cherokee Company. The Cherokees are on the most friendly terms with all the Indian tribes of the prairie. Consequently, there will be no danger of attacks from our Red Brethren. No wagon had ever traveled this route before, and it was considered impractical by some. But a better wagon road than we have made cannot be found west of the Mississippi River. Laura Ingalls Wilder's widely acclaimed novel, Little House in the Prairie, focused on the interaction between pioneer settlers of Kansas and the Osage Indians in southeast Kansas. In the book, it mentions her seeing the wagon trains off in the distance, which would be the Cherokee Trail a half mile west of here. Rhonda, tell us a little bit about Little House in the Prairie. This is where the Ingalls lived from 1869 to 1871. They were illegally squatting in Indian territory. This still belonged to the Osage. We know this is the place because we have an 1870 census that lists them being here. And this, the census in the well, historians are 99.9% .9 sure this is where the Ingalls were illegally squatting in Indian territory for about a year and a half, just like it says in Little House on the Prairie, the book. Well, that's just the beginning. Come along with us as we discover some surprising places along the trail. We'll hear from others in our group, the Friends of the Cherokee Trail of Kansas, to tell the story about sites along the trail. Here's Linda Anderson, Secretary Treasurer of our group. Linda, why don't you tell us a little bit about how our Friends of the Cherokee Trail began. Okay, I have lived in Galva all my life and had never heard of the Cherokee Trail. In 2005, I had heard Jack and Pat Fletcher talk at the Santa Fe Trail Symposium in McPherson. I was so excited when they showed the surveyor's map of the Cherokee Trail and Fuller's Ranch in Empire Township, where I live. That's just three miles from my house. In 2006, the Galva Museum arranged to have the Fletchers give a presentation, and people along the trail were invited, and that's where you came. We had a great turnout, and from that meeting, Friends of the Cherokee Trail Kansas group was formed. The group consists of people across the state who live close to the trail in their area. Our goal is to educate people and preserve the trail. And currently we have put up road crossing signs at 26 locations. And plans are in the making for a wayside signs at Butler Community College in El Dorado and right here at Little House on the Prairie Museum to let people know that the Cherokee Trail passed within a half a mile west of here. Other important things we've done is to get the Cherokee Trail on the Kansas Highway map, okay. the official Kansas State Highway map. And in 2020, we were able to get the Walnut River crossing of the Cherokee Trail 
placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Let's move on up the trail now to Beeson's Ruts. Trail evidence appears in the most surprising and overlooked places. Jim Beeson uh, and Diane Beeson won a national award from the Oregon, California Trails Association for preserving the trail evidence. Here we have Jim uh, to tell us about his, their property and discovering the trail evidence. Jim, what can you tell us about how you discovered that this is a trail here and what do you see in different times of the year? Well, there was an article in the, in the Sedan paper uh, calling people's attention to the fact that a trail went through Chautauqua County and we read that and we had heard uh, folklore from people that we knew uh, from many, many years ago who remembered people going through here and, and we were told that it went through this meadow. Mm -hmm. And so with that information as a background, after reading that article, we responded to a, to a, uh, a question, you know, if we had any questions about the trail and we called that number and told them what we knew. And Now you say you had contact with Jack and Pat Fletcher? Yes. Yes, they, they came out. They were very excited about what they saw. We had pictures that uh, provided further confirmation that the trail went through here uh, right after we had burned one spring, and it seemed evident that the vegetation was different. You could see mm -hmm. in the ashes uh, what appeared to be yeah. tracks. I'm going to ask you, what does it mean to you to have a historic trail on this land? Oh, I think it's uh, it's very interesting. We've met a lot of nice people as a result of it, and uh, it's just part of a history that should be preserved. Now let's go into deep southeast Kansas, some of the roughest land that you will find in the state of Kansas, to see what trail evidence is there. Welcome back. We're now in one of the most isolated places in the state, in Chautauqua County. Take a look at what we have around us. It, we have a land that's native pasture, it's never been plowed, and because of the limestone just below the surface, uh, we still see deep ruts in, this, in, the, uh, in the ground. The very best time to see this is in springtime, just two or three weeks after a pasture burn. Yes, 170 year old trail evidence that is still here today. We have with us the owners of this land, Rolf von Merfeld. Could you tell us when you first discovered that you had these amazing ruts? Okay, uh, I first figured out there were ruts after we burned the pasture. There's a lot of ruts that came through here, and I first thought they were cattle uh, ruts going up there, but they were too consistent, and there were a lot of them. Yeah. And finally, uh, somebody told me that the ruts came across here from the Cherokee Trail, and so when I next time we burnt, you could see them definitely all the way from down around the creek area all the way that goes up through here across the road. So that's really when I first discovered them. And they've been fascinating to me because when you burn, you can really see them. Yeah. Now there's grass on them, you can walk on them and tell the ruts, but that's basically it. What does it mean to you to have property that you know there's a very historic trail going that's across? Pretty, <laughs> it's pretty exciting, really, yeah. to know that, you know, a hundred and some years ago, there was a trail that went across here with homesteaders and everybody else that came along. Well, it's, it's quite, a, quite a treasure here. Yeah, it really is. We have a lot of people that see the signs. Uh-huh. And actually- they take note of it. Take note of it, right. Gives you goosebumps, doesn't it? To think of the trail travelers and their wagons making their marks in the land. Let's now tell some other stories of trails in the area. It's not often that we see such visible swales as these. The Cherokee Trail was not surveyed south of Limestone and Road 7 until 1871 because it was part of the Osage Diminished Reserve. So Linda, how did our group find out where the trail was? We learned it by three ways. Bill Maggard grew up in Oklahoma and heard many stories about the Cherokee Trail from his family where he lived. His interest in the trail led him to trace the trail in Kansas on satellite images where swales were still visible 170 years later, which showed us this site right here. A second way was with Charles Durbin, who knew from experience where the Cherokee Trail was because of working with his dad in the hay cutting business on the meadows like this. A third way we learned about the trail was through Brian. 
From time to time when we need to fill in the gaps of trails, I pull out my little helper, a copper pipe, uh, to do dowsing. I can tell where both wagon tracks and Indian trails go, and that helps fill in our information. I'll tell more about this practice later. So let's move along to the next stop, a rare if not unique find on the trail right in the town of Moline. We're here in Moline, Kansas, the site of the oldest swinging bridge in Kansas. Hi, Brian. Hi. I'm Amy Cook, yeah. and my family and I have lived here in Moline, Kansas for over 30 years. When my kids were young, we often brought them right here to the bridge to walk across the bridge or to wade in the creek. And we enjoyed our family time here, never knowing the significance that this location had in history. Right here where we're standing, Native Americans, um, gold seekers, immigrants, drovers, and outlaws crossed this creek as part of the Cherokee Trail in the mid-1800s. The rock ledges that we see here today have probably eroded some over time and taking in the falls over in that direction. So it's likely that the crossing was higher than it is today, making it easy for wagons and equipment to get across. The swinging bridge that we're near right here was built in 1904, is the oldest swinging bridge in Kansas. So if you're ever in this area, please stop in, visit the swinging bridge, and enjoy this little piece of Kansas history. Well, that's all for here. Now on to another location where you cannot believe this is in the state of Kansas. For all those who think Kansas is as flat as a pancake, you're in for a shock. <laughs> We're here at the Green Ranch on Pioneer Road. You know, you really know you're in southeast Kansas by looking around. Just across the road, the Cherokee Trail cuts through the corner of the Young Meyer Ranch. This is a 4,700 acre expanse of native Flint Hills Prairie, which will be preserved forever through the Kansas Land Trust as a working ranch. It's owned by the Earl W. Jr. and Terry Youngmeyer Family Foundation, and this prairie is also an ecological research site for Wichita State University. This entire area was once an alternate potential location for what became the Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve, which was eventually created on the Z-Bar north of Strong City instead. But in my opinion, this place is just as beautiful and must have been quite a sight to the people traveling the trail over 150 years ago. 